Hey guys, this is Super Testnet, and today I just want to show off my latest invention, which is Lightning Blinder. Uh, I'm trying to accomplish three goals with Lightning Blinder. The first is to lower the barrier to running a uh, to, to routing payments on the Lightning Network. Um, I want to make it so that even people can, with just a cell phone, can do that. Like you don't have to run a fancy, you know, a fancy setup. Uh, number two, I want to increase privacy on the Lightning Network by making it easier for people to manually add an additional hop to their Lightning Network uh, payment routes. And uh, third, I, I want to disrupt the heuristics that Lightning service providers use to guess who is the sender and who is the recipient of a Lightning payment. Um, so I want to show you guys how that works right here. And so I've got my cell phone pulled up. I'm gonna be routing a payment on my cell phone. And I wanna show you the, the uh, app that I'm gonna be routing this payment through is right here. This is, this is Phoenix Wallet. And Phoenix Wallet, of course, especially running on a cell phone, definitely doesn't have any logic for routing payments through it. Um, but I figured out a way to do it through uh, Atomic Swaps. So uh, the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a role. Uh, on my computer here, I've got sender and recipient. But on my cell phone, I'm going to be uh, a coordinator. I'm going to be a, a routing node. So I'm going to do that. And it's going to ask me what kind of fee I want to charge. Do I want to charge a flat fee, or do I want to charge a percentage? And in this case, I'm going to charge a flat fee. I'm going to charge, oh, let's say, uh, 15 cents. For every, every payment I route, I'm going to earn 15 cents. So I do that. And uh, now it's checking, uh, checking to, or it's actually announcing itself on Nostr that I am uh, available to route payments, and it tells me that I haven't earned any money yet because nobody's used me in their route. So now let's hop over to my computer, and on my computer, I'm going to say uh, we've got the sender over here and the recipient over here, and uh, they have to run special software to, to make this happen, um, but you know I am running that. Um, the sender is connected to, well, he, he can be connected to any Lightning wallet, basically. Um, I'm con currently connected to this CoinOS wallet, which has about $8 in it. Um, <laughs> I got rugged, and I'm waiting for my <laughs> $6 and change to return to me whenever they figure out their database issues, if they ever do. Um, but yeah, I've got about $8 on here, and that's, uh, that's what the sender's running. He's going to be doing a little custom logic in this browser page. And the recipient over here, he's got, he is connected to LND. So if I, if I open up my terminal here, I just ran LNCLI channel balance, and you can see that he currently has a balance of 10,000 sats. That's how much he currently has um, in, his, in, in LND. Okay, so now I'm going to have, you know, let, let's say the sender wants to send some money to the recipient, he's going to need to get an invoice from her, right? So I'm going to click receive, and I'm going to enter the amount of sats I want to receive. Let's just say it's 5,000. Uh, now it's going to ask me who I want to pick on the Lightning Network, uh, or uh, on, not on the Lightning Network, but rather running this Lightning Blinder software as my router. And it shows me the different people I can, I can choose from, and uh, I will choose this person. Uh, that is the person I will choose. So now you can see a notification pops up on here and says, do you want to earn 15 sats? If so, you'll be prompted to create an invoice for 5,015 sats and then pay one for 5,000 sats. And I'm using uh, atomic swaps to ensure that, you know, it's atomic and, uh, and the recipient definitely gets the money and can be, you know, rug pulled. Uh, so yeah, sure, I will do that. I want to I wanna earn some money. And it gives me a little prompt. It says, enter a lightning invoice for this amount, 5,015 sats. Uh, I can do that. I've got Phoenix Wallet on here. Uh, again, Phoenix Wallet doesn't support routing, supposedly, but I'm about to do it. So I'm going to create an invoice for 5,015 sats. Copy that. Paste it over here. Submit. Your invoice has been sent to the recipient. Within the next 60 seconds, you should expect to see a prompt from this app to pay an invoice as part of the atomic swap process. Uh, and there it is. So uh, you can see we're setting up an atomic swap here. And uh, basically, this invoice that I'm looking at here has been checked to make sure that the, the pre-image to this uh, invoice is identical to the one in the invoice we just created. So it's going to ask us to pay this, and it is perfectly safe for us to do that as the coordinator. We cannot lose money because the pre-image is the same as the one we created, and that means we're the only people who know it. We're the only ones who know that pre-image, uh, so the recipient cannot settle it. Uh, they're not able to. So I'm going to just uh, hit pay over here, and I can do that because I just need any, any lightning wall that's capable of generating invoices and paying them can do this. It doesn't have to have routing logic in it at all. I'm going to pay this, and you'll see that it doesn't immediately settle or anything. In fact, it just uh, sits there with a dot, dot, dot. 
And over here, uh, on, the, on the recipient side, he now has an invoice that he can show to the sender. Now, I know that that took a little bit of time, and you might be like, the sender wants to pay you, and it just took you like four or five minutes to get an invoice from them. Well, yeah, it's slower to do it this way, but you get additional privacy that I'm about to describe uh, afterwards. And uh, I think that might be worth it for some people to say, yeah, I'm going to take an extra step in order to um, disguise where the payments are coming from and where they're going. So I'm going to copy this invoice, of course, in a real app. This would be um, in a QR code or something. And I'm going to hit send and paste it into here. Submit. It says click OK if you want to pay automatically or cancel if you want to pay manually. In this case, I want to do it automatically. And so my CoinOS wallet over here uh, has been instructed to pay this. You should see that uh, number right there fall by uh, 5,015 cents. Uh, and it, it was sent. Uh, you can see on here it was sent on the recipient's end it was received. And uh, the routing node says you earned 15 cents by routing a payment. Uh, and I've got a little tracker here. It tells us total earnings is 15 cents. And th there's this one payment that he's routed. If I do more, there will be more. Over here, if I refresh CoinOS, you can see that, uh, well, if, it, if it'll load, my balance has, has decreased. My balance is lower now than it was before. Of course, now the internet's giving me trouble. And anyway, it's just true. <laughs> the money came from CoinOS and went out. Uh, I, wish I could, wish it would load and I could show you that. So anyway, uh, I, it was a success. Uh, and let's just talk a little bit about uh, how that works. Um, if I go back to Phoenix Wallet, you can see in here, Look at that, I gained, I gained eight, about 18 cents, or I gained about two cents rather, uh, because I paid an invoice for, uh, that was worth $5.18, but I received money worth $5.20. And so if I just look at those individual payments, uh, you can see that the pre-image here, the payment hash is CE327, and it is the exact same one in this one CE327 is the uh, is the payment hash there. So the outgoing payment and the inbound payment were, had the exact same um, secret that they were locked to. Oh, this thing finally loaded. You can see, yeah, I, my balance fell by that amount. So the sender atomically sent a payment to the recipient, um, and it got routed through <laughs> Phoenix Wallet, if you can believe it. Um, yeah, so so that is the uh, that's the secret here. The secret sauce is that if you do a, a payment from a wallet. Um, and it's going. It's it's paying the same. It's paying an invoice whose pre-image is the same one as one that only it knows. The payment is atomic, and you can actually route a payment through even a phone wallet. You can do this with anything. Um, you, if I, I could have run this with um, uh, with a, a cashew wallet, or I could have done it with a liquid wallet like uh, like Breeze or. Um, actually, I don't think Breeze currently uses Liquid, but Aqua, Aqua Wallet could do this. Anything that can send a Lightning payment and receive a payment, regardless of whether it's custodial or even supports routing, you can route payments through it because atomic swaps work, well, because this software makes it possible. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully people will, I, I, as the warning here says, I don't recommend doing this on mainnet. You know, I'm, I only coded the happy path and there are lots of edge cases where you can lose money. Uh, like I, I was trying this earlier, and my internet connection went down, and a payment got well. It didn't get. It didn't exactly get lost. It just got like I had to cancel a payment manually in LND. And if I hadn't, I'm not sure what would have happened. I think after a few hours, it would have automatically canceled. But anyway, I don't recommend using this on mainnet. <laughs> this is just for science. I'm going to show that this is possible. It's possible to route payments through a cell phone. Um, you can do it, and it can increase your privacy. Now, how does that increase your privacy? Well, um, let me just show it as an, as an example. Um, I routed a payment through Phoenix Wallet. And so Phoenix Wallet is going to be able to uh, look at the invoice that I paid, and they'll be able to see the recipient on here. And they will assume that um, I am the sender, that my, that my Phoenix Wallet is the sender of that payment. But in fact, it's not. Um, someone else is just routing a payment through me, and I'm, I'm your routing node on the Lightning Network. I don't know who the sender is. I'm just I'm just making money from doing this thing. Um, so if uh, Phoenix, uh, if Async used their typical heuristics to identify the sender, they would get it wrong in this case. They would think my Phoenix wallet is the sender when really it was uh, CoinOS was was the sender. Um, and then from the recipient side, you know, where did I receive this payment to? I received it into LND here. If I was uh, if the recipient was also using an LSP, like let's say. 
I was using, in fact, I am using an LSP. I'm using uh, LN Big. And so LN Big, if that's where I was receiving the money to, um, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to tell, am I really receiving the money there or am I just forwarding the payment to another person? Um, because this software can be run by the recipient, it can be run by the sender, it can be run by the coordinator, and it just throws, up, throws off the heuristics, uh, making it so that it's really hard to identify the senders, recipients, and the other stuff. Uh, below this, you can find the GitHub for this project, which is um, github.com slash supertestnet slash lightning binder. And you can see more details down here. I have a little protocol description and a, and a little graphic that shows how, how the flow is. Uh, it tells you how you can how this hides the sender as well as the recipient of a lightning payment. And uh, you can go there for more details. But uh, that's the video. Hope you liked it. Thank you so much for watching.